The jump cut was a key development in the editing process because it allowed the idea of continuity to be broadened and to have more of an impact. George Melies was was George Melies was one of the first people to use a jump cut in a movie. He used it in his early films to show illusions and magic tricks, not yet discovering the meaning it could bring to a shot. The purpose of his editing was also to show time and space. This was significant in the development of editing because it helped to show special effects and also advanced upon what the Lumiere brothers did. Melies also used dissolves and fades to show the passing of time. He also used it to make a swift transition between different shots. Alfred Hitchcock later on developed these techniques. For example, in Alfred Hitchcock's movie The Rope, he uses the dissolve as a seamless editing technique. Hitchcock also used things like jump cuts, dissolves and fades for storytelling and creating drama. They were all developed for mainstream continuity. Hitchcock also carefully thought about the different types of editing techniques and what type of effect they would bring. For example, using a dissolve to correspond to different shots and make them link together. As film directors became more creative by using things like multiple single camera setups, this adds pace to the sequence because they can get more shots done easier because there's more cameras to use. Techniques that were developed include building a sequence of shots, cutaways, temporal overlaps, 180 degree rule and cross cutting. The purpose of editing was for rhythm and pace, creating motivation in the shots, storytelling and creative drama, creating drama. This was significant in the development of continuity because it helped to add more of a variety to the continuity effects that were around at the time and also how to make continuity more dominant. So powerful, so beautiful. Precious. Precious. Down here, you sack of shit.
clips that you just saw were an example of a cutaway. A shot in which the camera view is reframed to give the audience information that was previously outside the camera's view. I'm kind of looking forward to doing that, to tell you the truth. But, you know, um, one of the things about, uh, um, you know, if there's a negative to computer editing, it's, like, it's, you know, like everything. There's a negative and a positive or matched up with each other. One of the things about film editing is you, know, you just have tons of holes in your stuff. There's, you know, anytime there's an optical, you've got to do that. To splice, position one piece of film, emulsion side up, on the pins of the right side of the splicer. Close the top part of the splicer to hold the film down. Next, cut the film off by bringing the bottom part of the left side of the splicer down into position. Raise the entire right assembly. And bring the top section down into place. Here too, some film should extend from the splicer. The perforations should be on the same side as those on the other piece of film. Bring the right side of the splicer down until it cuts the end of the film squarely. Then return it to its former position. To soften the emotion. This is what the long process of analog video editing looks like. It all starts with gathering up all the footage that you would need in order to complete your project. You would then go through a continuous process of cutting pieces of film and splicing them together into one continuous film strip. You would play back the footage on the Steenbeck as you go and repeat the whole process until the editor decides that the film is complete and ready to be watched fully through. The editing program known as Adobe Premiere. As you can see, the difference from analog to digital video editing is quite astonishing. Even the transferring and importing of video footage has been greatly simplified throughout the years. The hardest thing you would ever have to do in order to set up your workstation is to hit the OK button. Instead of having to manually import footage onto the Steenbeck, Adobe Premiere allows you to pull clips from an archive on a storage device. When you find the point in the clip where you want to make an end cut, you hit the letter O, which stands for out or ending point. You can then import the clip from the viewfinder into your sequence work area in order to import the pre-cut clip. In Premiere, you can also cut clips by simply tapping the command key and the letter K simultaneously on your keyboard.